Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawk Watch in Hocassin, Delaware. Today is November 1st, 2024. We had a lot of beautiful weather the past week with a lot of sunny days and a lot of days that were unseasonably warm, including some days up around 80 degrees, including on Halloween. How about we take a look at some hawk photos? Here we have a Budio, and on this bird we see that it has a belly band and dark patagial bars, making this a red-tailed hawk. But we see it does not have the red tail of the adult. It has more of a brownish tail with some banding to it and no dark trailing edge to the wing, making this a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and long skinny, somewhat pointed wings and very orange underneath. Perhaps we could call this a pumpkin belly. This is a juvenile northern harrier. In last week's video, I showed Trump Force One, but this week we had the real Air Force One. We actually saw it twice on this day, coming out of Philly, headed to Pittsburgh, and then coming back into Philly. And then again today, we saw it taking off out of Philly. So there's been a lot of activity in the area recently because Biden lives nearby, and also there's a lot of campaigning going on in Pennsylvania right now. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross, so we should be thinking Excipiter, or what was formerly known as Excipiter. See last week's video for that whole fiasco. But on this bird, we see a really long tail, we see a big head, and we see long wings. Now these wingtips are pointed back a little bit, making them look a little more pointed compared to if they were stretched just straight out, they would look more rounded. But this is a hawk, not a falcon. And when we're talking about excipiters, we're thinking either Cooper's hawk or sharp shinned hawk. And taking a look at this bird, we see a lot of teardrop streaking concentrated on the upper breast. And we also see that the outer tail feathers, which fold on the bottom here, are quite a bit shorter than the central ones. We can see those different length tail feathers. Combining those with the large head and the plumage, that makes this a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Compare that to this exhibitor where we see a tail that is very squared off on the tip because all of the tail feathers are about the same length, and we see a very small head. This is a sharp shinned hawk, and on this one we see the orange barring of an adult. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. We see kind of a distinctive facial pattern, and it's overall pretty light underneath. This is an American kestrel. Here's a good photo for us to analyze. First of all, does this bird have the pointed wings of a falcon or the more rounded wingtips of a hawk? Well, we see more rounded wingtips, so this is a hawk. Looking at the overall shape, do we think this is an excipiter or a budio? And we see that it has a relatively long tail, kind of shaped like a flying cross overall, so we should be thinking excipiter. Now, is this a sharp hawk or a cooper's hawk or perhaps even an American goshawk? Well, let's look at a few things. First of all, if we look at the tail feathers, do they all seem to be about the same length? And I would say yes, we see a squared off tip to the tail, um, not a big rounded tail like we would see on a Cooper's hawk, but more squared off tail, which normally leans towards sharp shinned hawk. If we look at the streaking on the underside, is it that teardrop streaking concentrated on the upper breast only, or is it more thick and blobby and goes further down? I would say it's the latter. We can see a lot of thick, messy streaking to the underside. If we look at the head, does this look like a big head or kind of a smaller head? And that's a field mark that I think is sometimes hard to judge. But if you were to look at this photo from a distance, perhaps we would not see the head sticking out very far past the wings at all. And also it looks like kind of a big eyeball on the head, kind of a bug-eyed look. And that's another good field mark for sharp shinned hawk. And if we just take a look at the overall shape and feel of the bird, does this bird seem big and lanky or does it seem a little bit more compact? And again, that's something you have to get a feel for, but I would say this bird's a little more compact. The tail is long, but it's not overly long. The head is kind of small. And especially the way the wings look, they're kind of somewhat rounded looking. You have some bulging secondaries here. The wings just look a little shorter overall. So. All of those field marks combined make this a juvenile sharp shinned hawk. Whenever the president is in town, we get to see the fighter jets circling all day and sometimes get to see them hit a tanker. In this case, it's a KC-46 tanker. Here's a photo from this past Sunday, and let me set the stage a little bit. So far, the season's been pretty disappointing in that the Broadwings pretty much completely missed us. We went from getting 15,000 last year to only having 134 Broadwings this whole season. So very low year for Broadwings. 
There was a Swainson's hawk seen about a mile and a half from the hawk watch that we never got to see. Up to this point, we hadn't had any golden eagles. So it just felt like things weren't really going our way at the hawk watch. Things were a bit slow. And normally I wouldn't even be at the hawk watch on a Sunday morning. That's my day off. And normally there's volunteers that are filling in. And it just happened that the volunteer who was scheduled to do that morning uh, got a new job and is moving away. So he's no longer able to cover. And so Kim covered the morning shift. So me and her went up to the Hawk Watch bright and early on Sunday, not knowing what we were going to see. And we had this bird right around 9, 10 a.m. So right at the start of the count, this bird came across low in front of us and circled in perfect light. Okay, so what is it? Well, that was our first thought when we saw it. Looking at this bird, just from the overall shape, we should be thinking Beautio. And if we look at the body, we see that it is completely dark underneath. And first of all, let me say we would roll out something like Golden Eagle just because this bird, first of all, it has a lot of white throughout the wings. Um, you know, Golden Eagles have white patches in the center, but they don't have all this white in this whole area. Um, and just from the small size, we could tell it was a hawk and not something larger like an eagle. But when we're looking at a bird like this that's completely dark on the body, that's what's called a dark morph. And of the beautios that we see, there's a couple possibilities for dark morphs. First of all, broad-winged hawks do have a dark morph that's very rare in the east. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've never actually seen one. Plus, there's not really any more broad wings migrating through, so we can eliminate that one. Looking at this bird, we see that it has a dark trailing edge to the wings, making it an adult. Now, red-tailed hawks also have a dark morph, the ones out west, and it's even now been proven that the northern or Abieticola subspecies has a dark morph. In fact, we saw one of them a few years ago at the Ashland Hawk Watch. So dark morph red tail is a possibility, but red tails are big and bulky. And importantly, dark morph red tailed hawks when they're adults have a red tail, which this bird clearly does not. So not a dark morph red tail. That leaves two species, Swainson's hawk and rough legged hawk. Now Swainson's hawks in dark morph would show more dark to the whole trailing edge of the wing, the, the flight feathers. And so we can roll that out as well. And there's a few other dark morph beautios that would be really, really rare that we may want to consider things like zone tailed hawk. But again, the tail pattern wasn't quite right for that. And so it leaves the probably the most expected dark morph beautio, which is dark morph rough legged hawk. And in fact, that is what this bird is. And this was only the fifth ever rough legged hawk for the hawk watch. And it's the first one since 2017. Uh, 2017 was my first season, and we had two light morph rough legged hawks that year. It was a, a good winter for rough legs, so we ended up having two migrate through, but very rare down here in Delaware. And it's a species that um, has been declining pretty much at all hawk watches. Um, up at Braddock Bay, where I work in the spring, they used to be really numerous, and the numbers have dropped quite low now. You know, if we get a couple dozen in the course of a season there, um, we consider it okay compared to in the past when they would get hundreds and hundreds of them. So it's a species that's declining and it's tough to see in Delaware. Sometimes they show up down along the beaches, um, but a really special bird to migrate past the Ashland Hawk Watch. Let me now talk a little bit more about the actual identification of this bird. Now, let me first of all say in this photo, it was turning and had the morning light hitting it perfectly. So we see in this part of the wing, we see a lot of brown and gold tones that if this bird was in poor light, this bird would just look a lot darker overall. So things are a little bit exaggerated just because of that perfect light. So keep that in mind. Looking at the overall shape, we don't see the really long tail of an occipiter. We see more of the medium length tail of a buteo. And rough legs are buteos that have kind of long skinny wings compared to something like a red tail, right? Red tails are big and bulky and their wings are pretty broad. The rough legs have kind of skinny wings. They hold their wings up into a bit of a dihedral. They have kind of a weak flap to them. They just feel a little bit different. They're, they're almost more similar to a northern harrier in the way that they fly. So when this bird was coming in, we could tell it wasn't flying like a red tail. Now, looking at the plumage of this bird, I said it's a dark morph, and we tell that from the underside of the body here being all dark. Now, with rough-legged hawks, you can actually tell males from females, which is pretty uncommon for most of the raptors that we see. And 
for, again, I said this was an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wing. The adult male rough-legged hawks are the ones that are the darkest. They're really jet black underneath, whereas the females have more brownish and golden tones to them. So this is, in fact, a female. And because it's a female and we have more of the brown here, we do see the dark square here in this area. And that's a good field mark for light morph rough-legged hawks. So that's another good supporting field mark that we were looking for in these photos where the light was hitting it. We see these dark squares and that's definitely a rough-legged hawk trait. Here's the top side of the rough-legged hawk. And here we get a sense of the overall shape and posture. So you can see it's holding its wings up and do a bit of a shallow V or a dihedral. Now looking at it, the one thing I would point out is if we look at the tail and the rump, first of all, it does not have a white rump. Light morph rough-legged hawks do have a white rump, so that's one way to confirm that it's a dark morph. Now with rough legs, there's also sometimes what are called intermediate morphs that are kind of in between, so things get complicated. But if we look at the tail pattern, if this were an adult male, we would see some white bands to the tail, whereas this is just a female, so it does not have those white bands but it has a nice solid dark tip that we saw on the underside as well as here on the top side. And it's got some modeling here to the top side, which I don't know if that's really a field mark or not. I looked at some other photos and wasn't really seeing that on the other birds, but this is just a really beautiful bird with all of those golden tones and a really special bird to migrate past the Ashland Hawk Watch on an otherwise somewhat disappointing season. Okay, now that you know more than you ever wanted to know about rough-legged hawk identification, let's move on to another species. Here we have a bird where we see a relatively long tail. We see kind of long, skinny, somewhat pointed wings. But on this bird, we don't see it being dark underneath. We see a lot of orange and we see a lot of streaking as well. This is an adult female northern harrier. And you can see it's got some messed up feathers in the right wing here, missing feathers. I don't know if that's normal molt. It almost looks like some kind of damage. So somewhat distinctive bird. And sometimes we'll use things like that to make sure we're not counting the same birds over and over. If we were to see this bird again, it would stand out pretty good that it's missing those feathers. So that's something we'll make note of as we're watching for birds. Here we have a hawk species that we're going to be seeing a lot of over the next few weeks as we enter the peak migration time. From the overall shape, we should be thinking Budio and late in the season like this, the two Budios that we're always having to distinguish between are the red-tailed hawk and the red-shouldered hawk. And looking at this bird, the main thing that stands out is it does look like it has translucent crescents near the wingtip, which makes it a red-shouldered hawk. Also, we see that it doesn't really have a belly band just in the middle, but it's got streaking that starts on the upper breast and extends down to the middle of the underside. And we also see that it does not have dark patagial bars. Good field marks for red-shouldered hawk. This is a juvenile. Here we have another Budio in a soar, and on this bird we do see a belly band and we see very faint patagial bars. And in fact, this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk, but this is about the palest red-tailed hawk that you're going to see. This is on the extreme pale end of what we see. In fact, here in the face, you can see a lot of white. And I didn't realize how pale this bird was until I was going through my photos in the evening. I really wish I had spotted this bird in the field and gotten uh, more photos and different angles. I would have liked to see what the top of the head looked like because when you have really pale red-tailed hawks, there's a subspecies known as criders that are extremely pale. And it would be good to get more photos to um, see if this was possibly one of those or just a really pale Eastern red-tailed hawk, but a really cool bird nevertheless. Here we have a black bird flying over and we see a pale eye. And normally that is a good field mark for common grackle. But if we notice this, this bird doesn't have an extremely overly long tail like common grackles do. It's more of a standard black bird shape. So when we have a standard black bird shape with a pale eye, that's a good field mark for rusty blackbird. In fact, you can see a little bit of rusty coloration to it. So this is the time of year that we get small numbers of rusty blackbirds migrating over the hawk watch. And if you don't know about rusty blackbirds, they're a species that there's a lot of concern about because their numbers have dropped a lot over the years. Um, they're a blackbird is usually more associated with wet areas. So one of the less common blackbirds that we see and something we always try to keep an eye out for. And their call note is also a bit different than the red-winged blackbird. So sometimes we'll hear them in flight before we see them. We'll hear the call note and look up to confirm it. 
Here we have a raptor high overhead in a glide. This is a large dark raptor. And what do we see? We see big white patches in the middle of the wings. That's what we're looking for this time of year for golden eagle. This was our first golden eagle of the season. You can also see golden eagles have a relatively small head. Compare the size of the head to the length of the tail. The head looks quite a bit smaller than the tail. Whereas on a bald eagle, they look more even in size. At least there's not that much of a difference. But heck here, I mean, the head doesn't really even stick out past the wings that are pushed forward here. So really nice that we're getting golden eagles. This was on Sunday, the same day we had the rough leg, and it's the only one we've had so far this season, but we've got some nice weather coming up, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get some more golden eagles coming up in the next few days. Here we have a raptor with a long tail, long, somewhat skinny, pointed wings. This is another northern harrier, and this has the distinctive adult male plumage with those dark black wingtips and the dark trailing edge to the secondaries, but otherwise pretty white and gray underneath. These are sometimes called gray ghosts. Here's a praying mantis that was hanging out at the hawk watch, so I decided to take a selfie with it. And thank goodness I was taking photos and not videos because right after I took this photo, it actually leaped and landed on my cell phone and I screamed like a little girl and people have been making fun of me at the hawk watch ever since. But uh, we've just been talking about how they bite and they can hurt, so I didn't want to take any chances, but I think we look pretty cool together. We've still been getting purple finches daily up at the Hawk Watch feeders, although the past few days the numbers seem to be going down, so we may have passed the peak migration time, but here's a nice male purple finch on the feeder from the other day. Um, you can see the distinctive facial pattern. You can see it doesn't really have any streaking to the underside, and it's got that nice raspberry color. Here we have a hawk high overhead in a glide, and this is a shape we'll have to get familiar with as we're coming into the peak migration time for this species as well. Looking at the overall shape, we don't see that long tail of the occipiters. It's more of the medium length tail of the buteos. Looking at this bird, we see that it's big and bulky, and we are able to see, even in a relatively poor photo, we can make out that distinctive belly band here in the middle of the underside, and we can see the dark patagial bars. So those are the things we're looking for to identify a red-tailed hawk. And also just the overall very bulky look to them. Again, as we're coming into November, we're often having to distinguish between high gliding red-tailed hawks and red-shouldered hawks. And the red tails just look a bit bulkier. The um, red shoulders sometimes droop their wings a little bit. They just look a little bit skinnier, just a, a different feel to them. But this is an ID challenge we'll have to do a lot over the next few weeks. Here's a small dark falcon that visited us by landing in the tree nearby. This is a Merlin. I want you to take a second and see if you can figure out what this species is. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people, when they see a bird like this, their eye gets drawn to this area. They see this white here and they say, oh, it has a white rump. That must be a Northern Harrier. But if you guessed Harrier, you're actually incorrect. This is not a harrier, this is actually an occipiter. We see that really long tail, we see a big head, and we see wings that are held out very straight. This is a Cooper's hawk, and looking at the orange barring to the underside, we know it's an adult. And when adult Cooper's hawks see other Cooper's hawks, sometimes they get really agitated and they fluff out these white undertail feathers. And sometimes it's not only fluffed out underneath, but it kind of fluffs up along the side or even to the top a little bit. And people mistake that for the white rump of the Northern Harrier. So it's just something to be careful of out in the field. And sometimes when you see a Cooper's Hawk that gets agitated like that, it will also do this really big, slow, exaggerated flap, which some people may mistake for the flap of a Northern Harrier. Um, but a lot of times when they're doing that, if you look, you'll see that there's actually a second Cooper's Hawk nearby. Looking at this photo, you should be able to immediately tell me what species this is. You can ignore almost everything. Perhaps the thing that should catch your eye are the translucent crescents here near the wingtips. When you see these translucent crescents, that is a red-shouldered hawk. We can look at the rest of the bird to confirm that. We see that this is a juvenile, so it has streaking that starts all the way up on the upper breast and extends down. We see that it doesn't have any dark patagial bars like a red-tailed hawk would show, and we see it has five feathers making up the wingtips, and they have very blunt wingtips. This is classic red-shouldered hawk. 
Here's a nice warbler highlight from yesterday morning. We see overall a very yellowish warbler. Doesn't have any wing bars, just very plain yellow overall. And we see a bit of a line through the eye, and very pointed bill. This is a late Tennessee warbler. Here we have a raptor where we see rounded wingtips, so we should be thinking hawk rather than falcon. We see a long tail, so we should be thinking occipiter. We see that the tail is squared off because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. We see that it has a small head with a very bug-eyed appearance, and we see a lot of thick, messy streaking underneath, and kind of a more compact shape rather than big and lanky looking. This is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have another flying cross, another occipiter, on this bird, we see a large head. We see that the outer tail feathers are quite a bit shorter than the central ones, so it gives it a bit of a rounded tail tip. We see teardrop streaking concentrated more on the upper breast, and we see relatively long wings that are held straight out. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. We made it through the entire month of October without a single drop of rain. Just a lot of very, very sunny weather, hardly any days with clouds, so. It was kind of fitting that as we came into November, in the morning of November 1st today, that we had clouds. And not only that, the sun peaked out from a break in the clouds enough to make a rainbow up at the Hawkwatch. And what do you need for a rainbow? Well, you need rain. And we had light rain for about an hour up at the Hawkwatch this morning. So it was barely enough to get the ground a little bit wet, but it's more than anything we've had in the past month plus. So really nice to get a bit of rain at the Hawk Watch this morning as a cold front came through and it's just a, a nice sign of some changing weather. You know, we've had just so many pleasant, warm, sunny days. We haven't really had a nice cycle of the weather with occasional rainy days and windy days. And so hopefully we're getting onto more of a standard cycle as we come into the last month of the season. And we had a nice November surprise today with a species that I've never had at Ashland before. And in fact, looking at eBird, it seems like this is the first report on there from the past 45 years. There's some historical records, but no recent records. Looking at this bird, we have a small egret with a yellow bill and black legs and feet. This is a Western cattle egret. In the past, it was simply known as cattle egret, but there's been recent taxonomic changes where it was split. So now it's Western cattle egret and cattle egret has a hyphen in the middle and there's reasons why certain names like that have hyphens and there's other ones that don't have hyphens and it's a whole very complicated thing. But the name in eBird is now Western cattle egret. Really cool bird, not super rare for Delaware, but you normally see them downstate. Um, it's kind of rare to see them north of the canal. Usually you can find some just south of the canal. You can sometimes um, find them a little farther south as well, but up here close to the Pennsylvania border, it's quite rare to see a Western cattle egret. Here we have a large raptor with a dark body and wings and a white head and white tail. This is obviously a bald eagle, not quite a full adult yet. You can see a little bit of dark in the head and the tip to the tail and still a little bit of white in the wings, but probably in another year or so, this bird will look like a full adult bald eagle. Here we have a nice look at a Butio. We have a classic dark, thick belly band and dark patagial bars, making this a red tailed hawk. We see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail making this an adult. And if you look here in this area, this is what's known as a full crop, which means that the bird has eaten recently. And last but not least, here we have a species that we're seeing a lot of recently as we're coming into the peak migration time. We see a red featherless head. We see a lot of dark to the underside of the body and the wing coverts, but the actual flight feathers of the wings are silvery along with the tail, relatively large tail, very small head. This is a turkey vulture. And when turkey vultures fly, they hold their wings up into a V and wobble a lot. And we've been usually getting around 100 or more turkey vultures every day recently. So it's just a slow, steady trickle of them throughout the day, occasionally seeing a group of five or 10 or even up to 20 or more sometimes. But usually it's just been a nice slow trickle as they wander through throughout the day. And taking a look at hawk counts, we can see the totals from the past week, starting on October 26th. You can see most days over 100 birds. The only day that was less than that was the day we had 99, but usually around 120, 157, 140, somewhere in that range. Um, you can see some days we're getting small numbers of black vultures. Turkey vulture numbers are pretty steady. Bald eagle numbers have been 
low to medium, not getting a ton of them any day, but it's been steady. Still getting a good number of Harriers, kind of a moderate number of Excipiters, and the number of late season Beautios is starting to pick up. You can see we had 33 Red Shoulders the one day and 16 Red Tails. Falcon numbers are really starting to drop off, occasionally getting Kestrels and Merlins, but that's about it. The final total for October was 4,164, which was actually slightly higher than last year when we had a record season. And taking a look at today's total for the first day of November, we had 161 birds. Again, around 100 turkey vultures. Really good bald eagle activity with the stronger winds today with 15. Still had a late osprey coming through. Still some exhibitors moving. Few uh, beautios here and there and only one falcon. So this is pretty standard of what we're going to be seeing coming up as we're getting into the peak time for the vultures, peak time for eagles, including golden eagles. And as the exhibitor and falcon numbers drop off, the numbers of red tails and red shoulders will pick up. So still a lot of really good birding to come the next few weeks. This early November time period is a time that's one of my favorites because um, any moment you could potentially get a golden eagle flying over. And it's a lot of fun when you get a lot of high flying red tails and red shoulders as well. And I like seeing all the turkey vultures They're They're fun to help boost the numbers, especially since the broadwings are so low this year. So a lot of fun out at the Ashland Hawk Watch, and we've had such beautiful weather with temperatures still up into the 70s, and there's a lot of more uh, warm days coming up in the next week as well. These next few days, we actually have some northerly winds, a little bit cooler, so hopefully we'll get some good pushes here over the weekend and hopefully some more golden eagles. So come out and join us at the Ashland Hawk Watch in Hocassin, Delaware. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.